Hello, this is Ira Whiteside, and I'd like to take some time and walk you through uh, some of the benefits you can get out of using OSA Data's uh, data profiling, cleansing, and uh, data quality suite for SSIS, particularly in the creation of uh, metadata marts. Metadata marts, as defined by Michael Belcher from Gartner, are really are a way for you to tactically provide metadata involving your application or organization. They, they also form an excellent path to help you in uh, working towards a uh, master data management or data governance program. And here at Melissa, we've provided all of these capabilities now within the Microsoft tool set, uh, particularly Microsoft SQL Server 2005 and 2008, and in their SSIS environment, which is Microsoft's ETL capability. So what we see here in terms of uh, getting and using metadata for, in regards to a metadata data mart basically involving data profiling is a simple chart. We've got an application where we're processing customer data frequently several times a day. And one of the things we want to be able to do is manage the validity and quality of our data and monitor what's going through our processes in particular uh, how our components are able to either correct or react uh, and adjust to particular problems. Now here you can see we've got a chart of state data and uh, we've got some interesting anomalies here. We've got the usual states uh, like Arkansas, Alaska, Arizona. We've got some spaces. We've got uh, some ends and some NNNs. We've also got some states with numbers attached to them. One other thing you'd, you'd like to know and you'd like to be able to find out relatively easily is, well, well, when is that happening and how is it happening and what's going on? We're using here a uh, Excel capability, a standard part of the Microsoft Suite and the Microsoft Stack, and we've built these charts uh, after using and dropping in uh, some of our uh, Melissa data components for data profiling and data quality. Uh, what I'd like to do is show you that uh, the details that we provide you can easily be used with analytical tools, and in this case, again, we'll stick with Excel. Well, we already see that we've got some problems here. Uh, in this particular case, we've actually uh, included in our processing the ability for us to track what the problems were and whether or not they got corrected, and I'd like to demonstrate that to you. So here, if we were to drop in, uh, we've got a, an ability here to keep track of a time the timestamp as to when these processes were run and if we were to drop that in uh, and then uh, take a look we can see how our trends are happening for these states we can see in running this process several times between the light colors here when processes were up when errors occurred we can also see because we've used our Melissa data metadata capabilities uh, to drop in and let's just take a look at the dirty data. So in this case we've had in indicators telling us whether or not we've cleansed fields and as you can see here we've got these spaces for states and the ones. If we were to now take a look at well what happened in these nightly processes or uh, incremental processes after we cleaned the data uh, we can see now that we've actually cleaned that up no more spaces, no more ones, we've now got all the correct states and if we were to look at this in detail back over here, we've got the associated numbers. We can see that we've also got uh, a running numbers as to what those details were. We can again flip these on and off as necessary uh, throughout the process. You can see here if we were to drop back up here and uh, take a look at whether or not we were including dirty and clean, we could include both and get a look at across time what values we had, where we had the space, when it went away, and how it was resolved. A few other capabilities. Uh, here you can see the same type of chart and working environment for a phone. You can see here we've got a variety of invalid phone patterns with periods and dashes and spaces. We're tracking them over time. If we were to take a look at the result of this after we had applied our Melissa data cleaning capabilities, we can see that we've now narrowed it down to really only two formats. The vast majority have now been corrected into the appropriate phone format with parens around the area code, spaces, and the prefix and suffix. And uh, we have got one anomaly here that we'd have to take a look at and see exactly what was going on with that particular data value. If we'd like to, if we take a look over here at our other drill capabilities, we can actually drop in on these patterns and we can see the actual values that are occurring. 
So if we were to drop down value here, uh, oops, sorry, right up here, there we go, and come back over uh, to our drill, and we will collapse this, and now we can see the particular value or record uh, where we actually have a problem because in this case we didn't get the formatting because we're short one digit. It's actually a nine digit uh, phone number. And lastly, maybe a quick look at, in addition to looking at values, we can look at patterns. We can see here that here's another example of us looking at phone number or state. Uh, in this case, if we were to drop in, we can see here we've got various values here. Let me drop this in here and we're going to pick up the state column. We look at the state column here and we apply the fact that we are looking at both cleanse data and dirty data. You can see here as we kind of include all of them, we can see we're back to looking at patterns where we've got blanks. The Z dollar sign means that that's an alpha character and a dollar sign. The ZZ represents the specific values. Uh, if we were to again drop this back to simply the cleansed values, you can see that we will shrink that up. One second here. And we'll also, in this case, uh, in order to get a look at the actual uh, specific cleansed values, we'll drop off the timestamp and see now that we're back to just good values. If we drop out the domain values here, we'll see for patterns, we're now back to a single pattern of giving us uh, a single state pattern for data. Now, quickly what I'd like to do is show you how we did all of this. And predominantly, we're looking at a standard SSIS package here. This particular package is going to create some work tables. One of them is going to be our metadata mark. It's going to prepare that initial metadata mark by doing some quick profiling against the incoming source. It's going to clean the addresses to fix the states and other fields that we didn't look at in this demo. It's going to validate and, and format the phone number. It's not going to actually verify the phone number at this point, but it will validate it. And then we're going to do some additional data profiling to analyze the results. And we're going to set this process up so that every time our, we process a new incoming customer file, we're able to get this data. Now, if we were to uh, take a look at, at the execution of this, we'll run this process real quick. We're simply going to take in 100 records, uh, again, accomplish our pre-processing, clean our addresses, move on to validate our phone validate and parse out or format our phone numbers and analyze our results. As you can see, that only took a few seconds to run. If we drop in real quick, we're not going to go into great detail here, but you can see we have a series of Melissa data components available over here for data profiling, data matching, and data cleansing. Uh, you can see specifically here we've dropped in some data profiling components. These are objects, GUI objects. We can open them up. Uh, we have a source here where we've got incoming data. We've defined it. It's a pretty straightforward source. I'll show it to you real quick. Customer IDs, phone numbers, as you can see, phone numbers with various formats, states missing, and the like. We drop in a profiling component for what we're interested in. We simply pick, in this case, that column. We set our output. We're allowed to create custom data profiling output with our components. Uh, we do that for a few more columns. We also drop in a component called value distribution. These provide all the same capabilities of the Microsoft SSIS task data profiler. However, that component from Microsoft will only write to an XML file and requires a custom and proprietary viewer. Our components will write to any table, allow you to profile anywhere in your data flow, and will write to any target. As you can see here, we've created several tables with our metadata in them. Uh, a quick look at this, and you can see as we bring this up, these are tables where we provide the source, column name, cleanse, the date timestamp, and particular information. We also provide the value distribution. If we go back to our package and our control flow, once we've done that quick profiling on the fly, we then use our Melissa data data enrichment component. And here, we're able to quickly go in, taking advantage of Melissa's extensive libraries, uh, set up uh, address verification. We do offer several other enrichment capabilities, uh, basically for name, phone, and email. We're going to cover address here. And then quickly come in and map and create a corrected city, corrected state, and corrected zip fields along with corrected address. Next, we'd move on. We're going to use our Melissa data uh, 
pattern searching and validation capabilities. Here we're using a, a component that allows us to use a pre predefined set of rules. We are able to come into the component, select the column that we want, in this case phone, pass through all of the other columns, point to a library where our values are stored. This component is data driven, meaning you can share your rules. Uh, an additional feature for SSIS. And then you're able to select the rule that you want, which in this case is to format the phone. Lastly, we're going to come back, readdress, take in our same data profiling task again, and in this case, take a look at our corrected uh, fields. In addition, from a metadata perspective, we're providing you the original dirty data, the cleanse data, and a series of switches and metadata tags that tell you what has happened to your data. So we fully support monitoring capabilities with the addition of our data, uh, Melissa data, data profiling, and data quality components. Again, as this process runs, we'll bring you back. Uh, if we were to go back to uh, one of the tabs we didn't look at, here's column info. This is additional data where at a high level you can take a look at an incoming file. You can see a column name. You can see the minimum and maximum values. You can see a series of statistical information at the column level that will help you make decisions. You can even embed this processing directly in your data flows and be reactive to, to changes on the fly. Uh, since we have run the repository, again, you'll see that we're up to line 19, and now we've actually refreshed yeah. our uh, metadata repository, and we've gained additional data. Uh, at that point, that would really cover at least a brief overview here while we're waiting for the data to refresh of our, our Metadata Mart concept. You can see here now we've added some additional columns, 21 through 25, for additional data and timestamps. Uh, we'll get the same information if we were to go back to our charts and take a look at them, particularly, let's say, our state value chart. You can see here we've got a series of date and times, and if we were again to do a refresh, you can see we've added new ones. Uh, I'd certainly like to encourage you to contact us regarding our capabilities here. Uh, we have extensive capabilities, uh, uh, far more than we've been able to cover here in a few minutes in this brief video. If you have any questions, please contact uh, Ira Whiteside at ira at melissadata.com uh, or visit our webpage, sign up, and, and uh, just go ahead and sign up for the download. Thank you very much.